Wow. Logo, Bart Keeler, nicely done. Oh, thanks. I uh, I updated. You know, after my little April Fool's prank of curling down here, I decided I should update the logo a little bit. <laughs> well, now that uh, now that we've we continue fixing things, <laughs> uh, and like I said, we fixed we fixed the All Star Game last week. We're fi- we fixed MLS season pass this week. Uh, when you've had the chance. I mean, obviously, you've been at matches, so it's. You, I guess this is only fifty percent of the time when you have. I guess my first question is, you subscribe, correct, to season pass? Well, I mean, I'm a season ticket holder, so I do get it for free. Um, so you know, I can't speak from the financial standpoint, but I do subscribe and I do have access to the MLS season pass. Yes. All right. So your thoughts after six weeks where apparently in some circles the world is falling down, Chicken Chicken Little has emerged. Apple is thinking of uh, of uh, going away from a, you know, a a two hundred million dollar per year investment after six weeks. And everyone is like uh, Kevin in in the hallway and after six weeks. So what have you thought so far? Well, first off, there's no there's been no actual reporters talking about this. These are just Twitter guys without a. A face picture saying, I have sources that say Apple said this. And I'm not saying that they're not to be trusted in terms of like the general vibes, but there's no legitimate reporting behind this that Apple is truly concerned. Um, so let's just keep that in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is this is year one. Mm-hmm. This is a trial year for everyone, for MLS, for Apple, for us as fans. So I think it is natural that we will see adjustments in 2024 if they're not changing then i think that is a problem that apple and mls need to that i would be i would be upset right like they they do need to make adjustments year over year um i think there are a couple of changes that i would make but for me personally i think people get this apple tv pass i think people are confused um john about what the goal for MLS is, because for for the last decade, decade and a half, it's been we need to get on TV and we need to reach new viewers, and that hasn't happened. Yeah, you've had some growth. There's been year over year growth. It has not been. It has certainly not been exponential, and it really certainly hasn't been anywhere close to a steady. You know, if you're looking at y equals mx plus b on a graph, it's not at one. You know, what I'm saying right. It's incremental at best the growth has been from tv viewership so i think that when you look at what apple tv and mls provide is a very good platform for fans of the teams in this league to watch their team play and engage in more content of their team it's also a good way for them to have a central location to find the rest of the teams in the league like for me personally I don't get to watch a whole lot of games live because I am an Atlanta United fan. I'm not some general U.S. MLS soccer fan. I'm an Atlanta United fan. So, yes, when I get home from the game, my options are somewhat limited, but they were limited before. You know, it's not like I could go to the game, come back, and be like, oh, look, I've got these games to watch. I mean, it was still like if we're kicking off at 730, then so is the rest of the East Coast. Um I like being able to see, and granted, you could do this on the MLS uh, MLS site as well and in their app, but I like being able to have access to all of the games to rewatch or watch the highlights. That is fantastic. Yeah. Um, I love having that for my team specifically. I think that it could be better, but I think the better comes with having a year behind you to say, okay, what worked, what didn't, what can we improve on, what can we add? Um, you know, I think for me, that's the big thing. And, and people are complaining about scheduling. Don't understand for like, for me personally, as a fan who attends games is fantastic for me. Yeah. And ultimately, not that, not that I matter more. That's not what I'm saying. But I, as a fan going to the game is still more important to MLS than Joe Schmo channel flipping this, I, this thing that doesn't exist anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
No, I, I'm right there with you. And I know a lot of folks, uh, you know, for me and Coco mentions the seven minute highlight recap. If you can't sit and watch 360 live, you get these kinds of things that are part and parcel of the, the larger picture. Right. But but I think that and it was a point that I made with Dylan. It's like there are some teams that are taking the ancillary element of this incredibly seriously. Yes. And then you have other teams who are like, bruh, nah, we'll get to it. And I would I would like, I mean, obviously, again, speaking from the Atlanta United perspective, I would like a little bit more content from Atlanta United throughout the week. I think a um, my idea would be a sit down with Gonzalo Pineda on like a Tuesday. So you release it on Wednesday or Thursday. Just breaking down basic tactics of the game. You know what I'm saying? Like they give me the goal that Yako scored and say, okay, how did this goal, goal come to be? How does this fit the, the overall tactical vision you have for the team? Little, you know, chalk talk with the coach would be fun. And it doesn't have to be in depth. I know all coaches get super weird about, like, talking about that. The goal happened. How did we make it happen? That would be really cool. Yeah. Um, and that could be 10, 15 minutes of just Gonzalo talking. And, and it would bring you a little bit better education about the sport. It could be, you know, uh, that would be the one thing I would do. I think that would be really cool and really easy for all teams to do, right? Like you sit the coach down for 30 minutes and you just say, Hey, walk us through this. And then you cut it down to 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, another thing obviously could be fan engagement. You could highlight fan stories. I think everyone loves that. Um, it gives a reason and a why behind why the fan support is so good in Atlanta. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you, John. There are, there are other things you can provide during the week that is more than just the player profile, which are cool, but like two minutes of Santiago Amada and I, like to eat some chicken dish i forget what he said but whatever like it, it's fun i'm glad i get to learn more about the players but give me a little bit more meat to this weekly content uh ricky is actually disappointed that you are not curling for us pod i, I know i'm sorry uh, we do have the men's world championships going on right now it is not free to viewers in the u.s so i have not been able to watch it we used to get it on uh, NBC or Peacock, they don't have it this year. We're stuck with the curling channel on a streaming platform called Recast, and you have to pay to watch it live. Um, and that's um, it's a little uh, upsetting. It's pay per stream, not per event. It's per stream you watch, which is annoying. So so how is a golden ticket holder John Schuster doing? Do we have an update? Uh, Schuster, last I saw, he was two and three. Okay. Um, but that's early on. They got a long round robin that was yesterday they definitely had a match last night against scotland i don't remember if they won or not yeah uh in addition to all of the other stuff that we're talking about obviously what i like to do is bring you in so you can have your referee jersey placed on uh, over what you're currently wearing <laughs> And then that way we can we can discuss things from a refereeing perspective, because it seems like there are things that pop up every single week. And I, I like to get your perspective since you have either observed it, been a part of it or, you know, have offered solutions and critical theory on it. And there were three things this week that, that I wanted to get in with when it comes to your, your refereeing. And I guess we can, take, we can take them in, in order of seriousness. First and foremost, did you see the video of the center ref in Liga MX kneeing the player in the nether region? I did not see the video. I saw a, a still shot that was like a meme somehow. Um, I don't know how that, and I was like, how did this come to be? I didn't realize it was this past week. Yeah. Fantastic. You had a player, in, and it was in the uh, America Leon match. You had a Leon player wondering about why VAR wasn't being called. And uh, apparently the chirping got to the point to where the center F basically need a guy in the nether region for opening his mouth apparently too much. And so the center ref has been given a 12 match ban for raising his knee and hitting a player in the nether region. 
I'm sure that ban would be the same if the player had done that to the referee, right, John? Um, I'm yeah. sure he would have got a 12 match ban, right? Absolutely. It absolutely would have been. Yeah, no doubt that the player would have been punished equally for his actions against their official. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's interesting. Wow. Um, I mean, we've, we've all been there as referees where we kind of want to take physical action to shut up the guy who's yelling at us. That's for sure. But uh, you're just not allowed to do that. No, that, that's uh, that, that's a bad. But that brings a bigger point, though, John. Right? We've been talking about this. Why are we allowing the crowding of officials on the field? Yeah. You know, the, and I think VAR has hurt. This is one negative I do think VAR has brought about as people are, as you mentioned, they're begging basically for a VAR review, and it's like, just because it's there doesn't mean it, you may have. And I mean, look. Okay, politics down here for a second. Yeah. There is a man who continues to believe that everyone else is out to get him for doing all the shady and illegal things that he is supposed to have been doing. And he blames everyone else. Of course. So he's created an alternate reality. Yeah. Sometimes players have this alternate reality of that they think that they have been egregiously wronged when the reality is soccer happens and you have to move on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, VAR has kind of hindered has brought some negatives in that because I think a lot more players are begging referees for VR review, which again is not even down to the center official. That's not the job of the guy in the center. That's a person somewhere else. Um, it, it, it does need to stop because the crowding of referees has gotten back to a problem. Um, and we've talked about it before. It, it does influence decision making, but it also creates hostile environments and matches that don't need to don't need to be there. And, you know, that was uh, a, a point that I wanted to, to make this week. That was point number one. And apparently, we now have gotten uh, a fourth point to discuss this week. I had three. Bernd has brought up number four. Point number two, in the FA Cup, Alexander Mitrovic was not, yeah. a, happy, was not a happy man. And with a handball situation that happened, uh, he threw, I, I won't say, uh, you know, a global nutty, but <laughs> it, it, it wasn't bad. I mean, uh, on the scale of nutties, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. But I guess Fulham threw the collective nutty on multiple levels. Yeah. And so, first and foremost, going back to the individual play in the FA Cup against Manchester United, first off, William punched the ball out of play yes. inside the six. For me, that was a red. Sorry, you know. And William complained about it, which you which you're which you're want to do. So Williams red, I thought was justified. Then apparently Marco Silva got mad and was yelling at the fourth. And he he got uh, instant he got instant whip out from uh Tarjeta Rojo and he got sent out. Mitrovic, as a part of all of this, he throws his version of the, the he throws his section of the full nutty. He got a red because he's shoving an official, and the video's yep. out there for those that want to see it. And so Fulham ends up down two men. They lose in the quarter, yep. as they should have. Manchester United moves on. I mean, we all know this is just the favorites as the Manchester United gets from English referees, right? That's obviously what this is. At no point can they be held responsible. Can the Fulham players be held responsible for their actions? The field? No, I'm joking. Um, yeah, no, all of those were justified. Like, you can't do those things. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I, you, can, you just can't. Um, Marco Silva, probably there were, I'm, I'm assuming what got him sent off specifically were, and I haven't seen the report, but it, it probably was a magic word or three. Yeah. Um, that, that's kind of what I'm good Because you don't really send, I mean, uh, coaches especially, you can ignore them a little bit better. But once they start using certain words or certain um, phrases or they don't, settle down once you like the play has moved on then they're gonna get thrown out I, i'm sure that was those were words uh mitrovich though man like that was again i think william was a, a reaction to something which it was a deserved red card but like from a human element you understand mm -hmm. you reacted to something okay like you can't do that Every child has done this where they react inappropriately to something. But 
you know, you, you admonish them for the reaction. Right. But you also say, hey, like, I understand why that was the reaction you had. This is why we can't do that. Your feelings aren't invalidated, but we need to learn how to process and express our feelings better. Mitrovich, on the other hand, <laughs> yeah, like time out is not enough. No. <laughs> so here's so here's your update. I don't know if you saw this this morning. Uh, received the standard three match ban. We get that. Yeah. Extended to three more for violent conduct towards a match official. Yep. Plus, plus two for the language inappropriate or improper, abusive, insulting, and threatening. So he's up to eight. Admitted, Wonderful. He admitted using the improper, abusive, insulting, and threatening language, unsuccessfully disputed the charge of violent conduct. So he's out for seven more. He's not back till May 13. Marco Silva got punished, uh, admitted abusing abusive and insulting words or behavior, and the fourth but he denied throwing a water bottle toward an AR. Charge was upheld, fine, plus two-game touchline ban. Further 40,000 pound penalty to the team. The FA is not happy with the sanctions given. The FA is going to appeal because they feel they're too lenient. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the FA thinks that eight for Mitrovic isn't enough. Well, yeah, I, I, I mean, again, what do we just say that the guy in Mexico, the referee got 12 matches, right? Yes, 12. So Mitrovic, eight, is that congruent? That's the thing. I don't, I don't I, you know, I don't think so. And obviously there are two different leagues, with two, like, but I think the FA is right. Because, again, this is something that you do not want to see in a football match anywhere Ever. And it wasn't because the referee did a bad job. I really, I really truly want the people like the referee did their job to the best of their ability. This was not a oh, they royally screwed up a, a, a process of a, a call or a restart or anything like that. It was what it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the reaction to that is completely improper and needs to be dealt with in a very hard, like, sorry, Fulham, but you need to make examples out of these three, definitely the Mitrovic and, and uh, Silva, because you cannot allow that to happen in the future. Yep. Issue number three for you this morning. Uh, we saw something apparently in the, the Philadelphia match last night that uh, has not been seen regularly. Rich Ransom, uh, this is what we were kind of getting into here late in the show. Yeah. Apparently, Philadelphia got a persistent infringement yellow, and it took CONCACAF Champions League for this to happen. I know, which is weird that it happened in CONCACAF because Lord <laughs> knows they don't like to give out yellows anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was... I mean, look, we all know that Philadelphia, and, and we can talk a little about, about Red Bulls as well because, um, you know, they, they do the same thing. Why, yeah. Um, you know, it, it – um, they foul a lot. Uh, yeah. that, is, that is a tactical That's a decision. piece of their game plan mm -hmm. is to foul. They, and so, yeah, like, it, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, and if you do, then you're going to, you know, you're, you should be rewarded with persistent infringement. Cautions. Mm -hmm. That's just how it works. Yeah. You should. Should. Um, you know, persistent infringement is a little fuzzy because yeah, it's fuzzy because you can apply it in a lot of ways. You can apply it to the player pers uh, committing several fouls. Um, you can apply it to players, the team fouling a certain player, take note of MLS. Um, you can also apply it to the type of foul that's committed either by a player or team. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways to kind of interpret that rule. But the other problem is that we often kind of reset the persistent infringement at halftime. Like, oh, well, he committed 3,000 in the first half, so it's fine if he commits another three in the second half. And that's kind of what... Um, Philadelphia has gotten away with. But, hey, we saw it for Red Bulls as well in our game. 
you know, where they got a persistent infringement yellow card in the first half. I mean, there was no other reason for that card to have been given other than, you know, that player had committed several fouls in a very similar fashion. Yeah. So I'm glad to see it because it needs to be given. Point number four before before you go, and as always, it's great to have you on on your on your Wednesdays. Julie Ertz. Yeah. The return of Julie Ertz. What do you think? I love Julie Ertz. Like, I think if this is the problem that I have with this whole conversation is it's hard to talk about it without seeming disrespectful to, to Julie. She is, for my money, the best defensive midfielder in the women's game, period. She's won two World Cups. She has proven to be an elite level center back and defensive midfielder, um, both for club and country. However, However, it is very curious that the woman who does not even have a club to play for mm -hmm. while the season is going on, who hasn't, who we haven't seen for more than almost two years at this point, who, again, we weren't even aware that she was actually playing soccer until Blacko had his press conference last week. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is appropriate to call her back in this manner. That's just my opinion. It is also just frustrating because we have actual defensive midfielders in NWSL who could have been called in. You've had two years, Vlatko, to figure out any sort of other combination of midfield that you could play with. Because I get it. You can't just replace Julie Ertz. There's not a single player who can do what Julie Ertz does. Right. Andy Sullivan has proven herself to be a very good midfielder. She is not Julie Ertz. You know, Jalen Howell is not Julie Ertz. Um, Sam Coffey is not Julie Ertz. Um, DeMello is not, like, none of these players can be Julie Ertz. But is there not a way to find a way to put a midfield together that solves a lot of the problems that you have that Julie Ertz cleaned up? And, and I think Vladko didn't choose to do that. And, and his solution was try Haran at the six. That's not going to work ever. Um, Miwas at the six, which defensively is just not good enough. Uh, she does still even struggles to, you know, really connect with the back line in possession. Uh, he thought, I'll put the tall girl there and put Courtney up there. That didn't really work. So I, his solutions have been not very, um, I don't know. They, they haven't been very well thought out. They've just been like, well, here's an idea. We'll do it. And so I think that's where I'm most frustrated. I, I love Julie. I'm glad that she is playing soccer again. She will make whichever team she signs for infinitely better um, when she is at full health. Yes. And I think that's the question is I'm not quite sure she's at full health at this point in time. And if it's worth calling her into this camp. What's the latest with, uh, we know that there is a, a new edition of. Uh, new edition was out. New edition is out with uh, you, Caleb, and Thomas. Yep. We will we will have um, a conversation next week after the women's friendlies because um, I think we'll have a lot to talk about. And this will probably be the last window that you'll – this is the last window for roster decisions, right? The, the next time we'll see the U.S. women's national team after these friendlies against Ireland will be their send-off series as they go to the World Cup that roster will be the World Cup roster. So this is the final decision-making window for Blacko. Um, I'm curious, again, what that midfield looks like because I do expect early Ertz to get, if not a start, a lot of game time. Yep. Um, I'm concerned that Blacko has already written her into the roster for the World Cup. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm not sure he'll actually use the performance in these friendlies to determine that. Um, I'm also curious what's going to happen. We brought in a lot of defenders. You've got Tanner Davison back. You've got Casey Kruger back. You've got Kelly O'Hara back. Um, especially O'Hara and Davison, they've been very good for the women's national team, but I don't think you can take... I guess you... I, I don't know. Davison can play left back. But I don't know if you're taking Davison's sour run Cook, Germa, Sonnet. I don't think you're bringing all five of those 
Um, I don't know if you're bringing all three of Huerta, O'Hara, and Sonnet. I don't know if you're bringing all three of Dunn, Fox, and Kruger. I just, you know, that's kind of the thing is, is there's some position battles going on in that back line. And, and, you know, is this the window we finally see Crystal Dunn playing the midfield to the U.S.? The answer is no, but like, hey, it's a fun thought to have. <laughs> um, but it, it's just those, that back line specifically is, has a lot of position battles going on right now because there's, I mean, look, this is the thing about being the U.S. Women's National Team. You have more depth and more talent than any other nation in the world, despite what people tell me about Spain, despite what people tell me about Mexico, which is a farce, and anyone who says Mexico is good is <laughs> fooling themselves. Mm-hmm. But, you know, England has a lot of depth. Germany has a lot of depth. France has talent. But the U.S. has the most talent and the most depth of anyone in the world. So you're going to get into these position battles that it's hard to choose the final 23, which, again, FIFA, go screw yourself with that because it should be 26, whatever. But Black has got some decisions to make, and I'm curious how he goes about that process. And this window is the last window he's going to have to do that. Bartimus Prime 19 at Soccer for U.S. P.O.D. It is not curling down here. It's not curling for U.S. We know that he probably, if he had the time and the resources, he probably would have. If I have the time and resources, there would be a, a, I would do a curling podcast 100%. That's what I'm saying. It's weirdly my second favorite sport, and I, I have no justification as to why, but it, it's fantastic. Well, uh, for the record, I, I now, considering our conversation about our favorite uh, golden ticket holder, from outside the sport of soccer. I now have, uh, by the way, I got my shipment from uh, Sh- uh, Shuey, by the way. I have my Duluth FC scarf off to the right. Wonderful. I have that right here. And then he also sent a USA, a Team USA scarf, which is in the back. So, Oh. Oh, yeah. You were so, lucky. Oh, yeah. So uh, golden ticket holder John Schuster came up big to help out things with the uh, with the stuff. So uh, he is a good dude. So uh, be safe, my friend. We'll catch up next week. See y'all. Enjoy the rest of we got Cocky Cap Champions League tonight, so enjoy that for sure. Enjoy taking a wonderful, hopefully it's a wonderful, relaxing Easter weekend for all of you outside <laughs> of us. Outside of Thursday or uh, Saturday night when I'm sure we'll all be stressed. So outside yeah. of that, I hope you all enjoy it. Exactly. So Bart will be back next week. Be good. Be good, John. Talk all to right. you later. All right, bye.